Hey everybody, I'm Josh and today I'm going to show you how you can edit with proxy files. At the beginning of my editing career, I found myself dealing with clients that were sending me 4K footage and my PC just like I could throw the footage on the timeline, but then I could say goodbye to smooth playback. So then comes in the biggest client that I had ever gotten during that time. And I wanted so badly to make it as a video editor working from home. That was like my dream come true. And here I have the biggest client that I've ever had. I'm like on the verge of my dream actually coming true and my computer just can't handle the footage. So then I had to make the choice. Am I gonna go to my client be like, hey, I'm sorry, but my computer can't handle these 4K videos? Or was I going to make this video happen? I wasn't gonna let computer hardware that I couldn't afford yet get in the way of my dream of being a video editor. Plus, the money that I made from that project got me to new levels with my hardware too. I found out there was a way to do this and it was called proxies. Well, that project happened maybe half a decade ago, and I'm still a video editor. So needless to say, it worked. Proxies are substitute footage files that are created from your original footage files. They are created to be stand-ins that your computer can easily read and which are swapped back out again last minute with the original footage during the media export step. There are certain parts of the project where you cannot use proxy files. Specifically, these are the pieces that have to do with the color and the look of your videos. And this also includes parts where you're working on sharpness and blurriness. Proxy files are much smaller in resolution. So if this is your 4K video, proxy files are going to be that small. And this counts double if you're using raw footage, because when you transcode raw footage to proxy, you're going to go from footage that has a crazy dynamic range all the way to a flat proxy rendition of that range. So for both of these cases, what you have to do is just work on the look and sharpness and blur effects with your proxy files turned off. And it's pretty easy to do. So now I'm gonna teach you how to make the proxy files properly so you don't mess up any settings. All right, here we are in the example project that I made and I'm using two pieces of footage that I recorded with the drone a long time ago. They are both 4K as you can see here. Oh, and if you don't know this, I'm from Aruba. I live in Aruba. It's a small island off the coast of South America. And if you've ever heard that song, Aruba, Jamaica, ooh, I wanna take ya. Well, Aruba, that's where I live. Anyways, this is a place called Mangalhalto. And uh, I went out with my wife and her cousin and we took the drone out to take some footage of the mangroves. Looks pretty decent to me. And honestly, my computer can play this back with no problem with the timeline, but uh, that wasn't always the case. So I'll just go ahead and demonstrate how I would attach proxies for these two videos as if my computer could handle them. All you need to do is select the footage that you want to create a proxy of. You right click and then you go into the context menu where it says proxy, create proxies. So my advice for you is to just add your own resolution custom because if you use full half or quarter then it'll calculate it based on the size of the footage so let's say if you had a 4k video file it'll create a different frame size than if you did this with a 1080p so i just like to use 1280 by 720 and then we can head over to the preset Personally, I like to use the Cineform QuickTime Proxy. They're really easy on the editing software. And here, if you don't have Add Watermark checked, I would suggest that you turn it on because it'll add a watermark in the bottom left corner of the footage. The reason you want that is that you want to know for sure if you have a proxy enabled and what you're looking at is a proxy. The only reason to really avoid using a watermark is if you intend to use the proxies as part of the export process because there's an option to actually use the proxy footage as your source file for the export. So if you aren't going to do that, just tick this box. It'll make your life easier. And then over here on the bottom, I usually just choose the first option next to original media and proxy folder because it keeps everything in one spot. So you'd never have to worry about where everything is. But if you really wanted to, you could put it somewhere else just browse where you wanted to these are proxy files so we're going to click OK and the first thing that happens is it sends the files over to Adobe Media Encoder and this is where the proxy files will be created so we can see here it's already encoding we'll give that a minute okay we can see that the proxy files are done so what you have to do next is just close the Adobe Media Encoder window and we can see a new symbol on our timeline. It's this tiny little proxy symbol. 
Also, if you have these icons set to thumbnails, you could see that there are proxy files attached. They're this tiny, tiny gray symbol. It's crossed out right now because they're not enabled. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, the first way that you can turn on your proxies, I have to include this because it's literally legit. So I don't uh, recommend you do it this way, but you just go to edit preferences and then media. And here you could tick this box to enable proxies. But I'm going to show you a way easier way to do this. Just cancel out of there. So once you have your proxy files created and attached, all you have to do is press this button, toggle proxies. And if you don't see this button, all you have to do is go to the plus sign menu here and click and drag toggle proxies. Just drop it there. And then you have the button. And now when you enable proxies, you will see this little gray watermark. Because we enabled the watermark, we can actually easily see that it's enabled. And also down here, you can see this tiny blue symbol. So when it's blue, what you're looking at is a proxy. So let's do a quick experiment and see how this works. I'm going to scale up the footage. And we know this is proxy because this is blue and so is that. So I'm going to turn off the proxy and let's see if it gets any sharper. And it does. So you can see that there is a loss of quality and especially when you zoom in, you can see the difference between a proxy file and the original media. So it's always a good idea to turn off your proxies and then do your zooms to make sure that the final video isn't going to look blurry like this. If I was actually editing this, I couldn't put out something that's this blurry. I would have to be like, okay, maybe this is as much as I can go. Yeah, you can see it's still a bit blurry, but if you show this just for a few seconds, and especially if there's motion like this, it's not that noticeable. So turn off your proxies when you're doing zooms. And now that we have proxies enabled, you can see it right here. We can easily scrub the timeline. Meanwhile, if I had it disabled, we get a little stickiness. Do you see that? There is a difference. So, you know, if you ever want to jiggle your playhead like this, Make sure to have uh, your proxies enabled. <laughs> the only other thing that I think I should show you is um, by the time that we are at the process where we want to export this, I just place the out point. I'm going to go up to export just so I can show you what you can do with proxies. Once you've given it a name and specified where you want it to be exported to, choose your format and all that, you can, like I said earlier, choose to use proxies in the export and you'll actually see the symbol appear in the preview here. So that's why you wouldn't want to have a watermark if you were planning to use proxies to export a video. Off the top of my head, I think I might use proxies if I need to make a really quick export and show it to a client in maybe 10 minutes or something that's that might be a time I might use proxies and even in that case I don't think maybe the symbol will matter at all so eh you know whatever your use case might be and there you have it you got to have your cake and eat it too you were able to edit the footage that was way too difficult for your pc to handle but you did that easily and you can now export it at the very best quality that your footage can allow you to do if you found any of this helpful don't forget to leave me a thumbs up well that was it for this video i hope you learned how to use proxy files properly and i hope to see you in the next video take care now